And our guest is Fuad Abu Bakr. You've been may have, you've been hearing him since uh, 2010, the general 2010 general elections when he came out on his own as um, the leader of the new national vision. And Fuad is active once again in the politics. And um, I don't know if he will tell you officially and announce it this morning officially, but he has been boldly campaigning in the Digo Martin West constituency and is likely to go up as a candidate there. Another spoiler in Diego Martin West, Fuad. Um, but more importantly, it keeps on our theme of youth as well for the morning. And um, here's Fuad. First of all, you're not just going against the odds of, of having a new national vision, but you're going against the odds of carrying the Abu Bakr name in Trinidad and daring to do it mm. the other way, where your father did not go, you're doing it the other way. With his endorsement as well. Good, good you know? morning. Good morning good to morning. you, Charmaine. Good morning to everyone in the studio. Good morning to the listeners of, of 107.7. Mm. Mm -hmm. I thank you all for the opportunity to be here. I thank God for life. I thank God for strength. I'm a strong young man. And uh, just just to introduce myself, because I have to correct a few things this year, oh, Charmaine. Good. Let's you, go. You're my sister, all right, my mother. In no way whatsoever is the new national vision um, a spoiler, especially in Diego Martin West, where I will be contesting mm. this um, 2015 general election. I'm a fixer, if anything. Okay, I okay. feel as though the parties that existed before have spoiled our nation in a number of ways. Um, you can give credit where credit is due. Of course, they did positive things as well. But... In my humble opinion, as a young man looking at the political landscape, I feel as though what Trinidad and Tobago needs to move forward is not being presented by the existing political parties. And you hear this talk all over Trinidad and Tobago, in the bars, in the um, barber shops, on the street. Boy, we're fed up, we're tired. There's so much nonsense. All of them is the mm -hmm. same thing. But yet still, how many of us are willing to stop, step up to stand up and say, say, okay, we're not satisfied, we are going to be the change. And um, that is what I am doing. I am actually, you know, putting myself out there, making the effort as an individual. Um, I was speaking to Fitzgerald Hines and some others yesterday, you know, and I said to them, you know, I have ideals that I would like to see in my society. And if I feel as though y'all, the existing pol politicians are not doing it, then I'm going to get up and get it done myself. Y you know what I mean? And that is what I want to, to really translate to the ground, to the people, to the youths. Get up off of your tails, people. Let us do it ourselves. We don't need anybody. We as a people can't empower others to fail us. You know, it doesn't make sense. I always quote Einstein. Um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And we have been doing the same thing over and over politically in Trinidad and Tobago for how much years? The the, the, the point you make, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it, the point you make of uh, doing the same thing over and over is well taken. But you spent four years um, studying uh, both law and business, and you know that even in law and or business, there is an institution. Within that institution, you've got two choices. You can, one, stay inside the institution and try to tweak it, which is more tolerable with the wider society, or you can take the move that this mold needs being broken, which is um, risking some form of alienation. You have been invited to join some of the parties as the head of, of a youth group, and you said, no, I'm not going to do that because you're pushing the same old thing as Stalin was saying. But on the heels of what I just said, that sometimes the incremental is the way to get over as against the let's say the evolution as against the revolution you're, you're well informed politically yes um, throughout my short political life and you know I thank God I have quite a bit of experience at the tender age of 29 I am the youngest political leader of a party in Trinidad and Tobago and I have been approached on numerous occasions from both big parties to contest seats for them, to get involved with them politically. Um, up to last night, I had to hear, uh, you know, the mama guy, in my opinion, you know, you need to come in the PNM. You have so much to offer. I, 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 I respect that, but 
I feel very strongly as though I don't want to be used. Mm. You know, I've seen other individuals in our society um, who have been used, in my opinion, by these political parties, who, when they go into the party system, they have to toe the line, and they toe a terrible line mm -hmm. to the detriment of our nation. And I, I want to have the capacity to choose. If you are going to empower me, I have to be able to say what is right, you know, regardless of your institutional structure. You know, you can't ask me within any system to sit back and watch corruption, lies, um, you, you know, you name it, and just toe the line because, you know, I don't know. Okay, well, th in, in that case, you're setting up yourself for a long, hard journey ahead because... Mm. I'm a young either. man, Charmaine, and I'm young, black, and powerful. I have no problem struggling for what is right. Well said. I could say that you shut me up, but <laughs> if you get into... Um, if perchance, but and, uh, when I said spoiler, it would mean that, that you know, you have um, the incumbent Dr. Rowley, mm -hmm. and then we have, on the other hand, Philip Edward Alexander, who's going to, he's probably going to pull a couple hundred votes based on the demographics. Right. Yeah, which we discussed at, in our program here. And then um, you, your party polled 140 plus. Right. In the last elections. My party, the entire party. The new, no, no, no. Indigo Martin West. Right. Yes, yes. Um, so I mean, spoiler in the sense that you're going to pull away votes from some. Are you going to make? You're going to make a difference in in, in Let us West. let us talk if we want to talk um, politics and figures, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had a strategic plan going forward. Mm -hmm. Right. The last election, when I contested the general election, we had a plan. We knew this was the start. We need to set a foundation. So we made our stance very clear what we were about. Um, I was extremely heartened to see just about 3,000 votes in 12 constituencies mm -hmm. for a party that um, didn't spend much money, that didn't drive people to the polls, that basically had started and just expressed their views, that was led by a young man at the age of 24. Um, I, I, I was... I was strengthened by that. Some people thought, you know, all you get licks and all you lose, all you deposit. And I was like, no, that is not what it is about. I celebrated that night. Mm. Um, the PNM um, family would know that I passed with my music I truck remember seeing you in <laughs> front of Bally's house. house yes. And yeah. some of the UNC faithful would remember that I reached to um, Renzi complex. Renzi complex with my music truck and they didn't understand you know why what you celebrate in mm -hmm. but i i i if you believe in something and you're doing something that is good that is right then there the can only be success from that i told mr fajal hines yesterday because they can't they can't understand me sometimes I, I told them the measure of success is not getting into power and being able to use the resources of your country to get wealthy or whatever that is not my measure of success Success for me is affecting those around me positively. And I have seen that tremendous effect. So step from there, I contested the local elections as well. Mm -hmm. Just two um, areas. One was Carnage and one was San Fernando. And what was your, your um, mm. what did you poll in Carnage? We, How many we votes? polled hundred, a hundred and about a hundred. I can't remember area. the figure. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So... I, I have been strategically working towards a political and a general goal for Trinidad and Tobago. I have been working in Diego Martin West for the last five years mm -hmm. assiduously. Um, I live in La Verta, well, you know that, Charmaine. I see you every, well, not every day, ever so often. Um, when we have community issues, Charmaine, respectfully, you call me to help, you know, and that is the case throughout our district. I have to mediate certain conflicts. I work physically. You know, I, I empower individuals. Um, I have to say thanks to the Diego Martin Regional Corporation and to the URP and other um, agencies who have somewhat um, assisted, not even assisted, done their job to facilitate for the people of Diego Martin 
to to work. I have been working with people, working in a real way. I play f- cricket at Four Roads. I play cricket with Scorpion in on Hague Street at the center. I play football with Congo in Northern um, Savannah. I, I sponsor Pity Valley team. Man, we have a steel band coming out of Diego Western. Martin, Western Stars, yeah. Philharmonic. Yeah. Um, we, we have been working within the community. The amount of lecturing I've had to do to youths, because um, we have issues endemic in our community. So people recognize this. You know, youths are not stupid. I, I'll be very frank with you. Mm-hmm. While some of the older people say, PNM till I die or whatever till I die, mm-hmm. our demographic, 35 to 18 and even under, who can't vote yet, we don't carry that, in my opinion, baggage. We understand we are human beings. We understand we are Trinbagonian. We understand we need to live in our society. And I connect with them. Just to be really clear on this, um, the voice you're hearing is of our guest is Ford Abu Bakr, and we are talking about the um, his party, uh, the NNV, as it were. And um, you, you mentioned 18 to 35. I understand that demographic. I understand they, they are restless. God, I was there too. So, I mean, I, I, I understand that. However, does that form sufficiently a sizable um, number of the, uh, of the electorate that even if your message went out to them, it will put you in a position uh, with leverage as it were. Is that something you have, you have considered? Because I, 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 don't, I see a disconnect there. The age is against uh, the, the, the folks who are voting. I mean, you know. The, the Very true. So we, we have been extremely strategic in trying to reach these youth who somewhat are disenchanted by the political process. Mm. So we have that challenge of bringing them out. And we, we have been working on strategy to do that. Mm. And I feel strongly, not only that young vote that would give us four, five thousand individuals, you know, citizens in Digo Martin West. But also, I know there's Charmaine and the other conscious older people mm-hmm. who, if they see a young man who is really standing up for what is right in the society, they would be willing to, um, you know, give me that support as well. So we count in numbers, eh? So we go a thousand again. Mm-hmm. Well, I have not voted <laughs> for, for years, for a long, uh, long time. And I would love to see you this uh, election. I'm not, even sure, I'm not even checking <laughs> if my name is on the list. <laughs> I am not voting. Well, I beg you. Let me beg the population mm. of Trinidad and Tobago, Tego Martin West, the 22 constituencies in which we are going to contest, mm-hmm. right? 22 constituencies, predominantly the marginal constituencies and the, the new marginals, in my opinion, because Tego Martin are three new marginal mm-hmm. constituencies, in my opinion. Is that a marginal, is it a Diego Martin marginal, one that you think you can attract? Yes, you, I, f- you, you, I, I feel you. confident. I feel confident that in Diego Martin West, we are going to make the inroad that I need. And, and the first young MP, the first political leader of an independent party, uh, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, historically, is going to win his seat in Digo Martin West. This is not your revolution, because as you said, your revolution is to represent people and bring them uh, towards your ideal. But if we have needs that need to be met, maybe, uh, you know, uh, I'd have to be intelligent in the way that I present those needs because I'd be um, a minority. Maybe, you don't mm-hmm. know. I may win all 22 seats that I contest. Mm-hmm. We don't know, mm-hmm. right? There are ways to, do, to deal with things when we are discussing some appropriation bill, something that is disconnected from the needs of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, it may be that I would stand up and say, you all know Diego Martin does not have any water in La Perita today. And of course, the standing orders would take effect. Somebody would tell me, sit down, etc." All due respect to the institution. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it may be the case that I didn't have water because I live in La Perita. So uh, it should a bit of scratching because I'm bad. I like I like I like the use of, of strong words to carry a message. I mean, Shaman and I—that's what we do. We our business is the use of words. So, I got a question for you. So on let that. me finish. I may, I may have to stand up again and say I didn't bid. Y'all bid in Goodwood Park this morning. Y'all mm. bid. Y'all bid this morning where y'all were because y'all had water. 
Laporte didn't have any water this morning. And I may be put out of the parliament f on that day, but bet your bottom dollar, Laporte will have water the next day. So there is a way to represent people. We understand as a people if we don't stand up, it's almost um, so, so sad. You don't go out and sometimes protest. Like it, no road ain't going to be fixed. If you don't gather the people together and say, let us go and demand our right, then they, they're not going to get their rights. Ford, I love the optimism, but I think Raleigh was put out and his, his, his area still didn't get anything. He didn't make quite, he quite, didn't make quite an effort. He didn't make quite an effort. He would have rested, but he would have rested a lot of his, um, mm -hmm. his hope on having as an MP, retained uh, the Diego Martin region. The, um, taking it back, the Diego Martin Regional Corporation, the PNM taking it back mm. in the local government elections. And by that, he would have, that would have been in his absence, his work on the ground. In all fairness, he's not here, which is why I'm saying it, yeah, would have been mm -hmm. his work on the ground because we know that he's not very present in the constituency. In my opinion, he's an absentee MP, just like many of the others, and people recognize that. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe he has more chance going for a Tobago seat. Um, all respect to Tobago people. But he has not been working in Diego Martin West. But he, mm -hmm. but he has a seat and he's had it for so many years mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. by thousands of votes. Are you... Not thousands of votes. The COP, which is the last year. party, in, yeah, my he, opinion, yeah, he in my he, opinion. His margin was 500. Yes, he had yes. to recount. Yeah. I, I'm saying to you, Charmaine, those youths that supported the COP because they, they're campaign organizers are with me now. And they know that. Who Some would have been working with Rocky Garcia? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Even the campaign organizers, some of them for the PNM, are with me as well, working with me. So we, we have already checked. We have already said to ourselves, listen, we have this block because the COP is uncompetitive in Tego Martin now. They have disrespected the people of Trinidad and Tobago with their lack of service, especially in these areas. Mm -hmm. So they can't come to the people again. That's why you see this new third force thing and all kind of other semantics coming up. We have seen that demographic gravitating towards us. We have had open reception from all the youth. So I'm saying that it's going to take a little bit more, but not much more. And if I give Dr. Rowley a run for his money, even that in itself would be victory for me you see the level of humility that we need as leaders mm. sometimes it takes a babe a young person to teach us that if shaman will forgive me for a moment i do want to um, go back to something you, you said earlier i started um, when i interrupted unfortunately the first time i i was talking about uh, the, the the energy that you have and the passion that is so clear you are clearly a student of the game you so see you've had it from very young you have studied law you've studied business you are studying politics right now are you worried that the rhetoric used uh, the language used is something that will be um, off-putting to a number of folks who may like what you're saying initially, but because words are so powerful, when you say things like a strategic political revolution, the use of revolution simply because of, of, of that. I mean, we can't get away did, from that. Did I say uh, that word? Uh, I stay away from saying Well, the newspaper used it uh, uh, in an interview you had, I believe okay, it was yeah, in the Express, use, where you that. said <laughs> you have a strategic political revolution. Words like that. I mean, you, you, do, do you find it difficult to want appeal to the young constituency who love the use of that and, right. and, and, and they embrace it because they want a change and those who uh, may be willing to listen to what you're saying but say, wait a minute, against that backdrop you sure you want to say that? Is that judicious or that injudicious? Abu Bakr well, name. That's well, what, well yeah. thank you very much. I don't know if there were quotation marks but just even, around that statement. But even if you did not use the word, yeah. you're working with your dad's name. You're working with the Abu Bakr name. Uh, li listen, we, let's dispel this once and for all. Although it won't be once and yeah, for all. Yeah, you'll have to keep saying it. It, it, yeah. is, it is clearly ignorance to ever judge an individual based on their parentage. I didn't choose that. I didn't choose if I was black, if I was white, if I Indian, African. So for someone to discriminate against another or to judge another based on those, those things that you have no control over is total ignorance. But you will also concede that there's a degree of ignorance not to think that folks are in fact going to make so what the we linkage. Can do, what we can do, and especially the informed, intelligent um, people, even in the media, we can we could bombard their minds and help them to understand that that is ignorance. Mm -hmm. You should judge an individual 
based on their actions. <laughs> you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Keith Rowley, we had all kind of crazy assertions that his, his parentage was based on rape or some nonsense the other day. And that had has not stopped him, I, even if it was true. But lineage and garbage are two different things. Uh, in that uh, case, it was but, garbage. But, <laughs> well, we're not even questioning it. Mm -hmm. I won't question it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, even if that was true, mm -hmm. that an individual was born of rape, for example, and they are able to excel and work within the society, get their doctorate, um, achieve political office, etc., then their contribution is positive. I mentioned twice what you have been able to excel in, and I know you're not making this personal, neither am I, and I fully agree with you. And, I and concur with you. And likewise, Mrs. Bicessa, right. because I heard them, they, they cast aspersions at times. Mrs. Bicessa said she came from humble beginnings, mm -hmm. which is extremely admirable that they did not choose to, to walk with, etc. But look at where she has reached. We never judge people based on their their parentage. That is ignorance. So you don't think so that I is something that, I sh that we should worry about? I understand what you're saying about fairness, but we are saying, all right, then folks should be, you believe we're matured sufficient that we can say, forget about the father. This is a young man uh, clearing his own path. Let's follow his path. May articulate for me first one of the primary areas that your uh, group is looking to do in the area of campaign finance reform. Articulate for me one of the areas that you're talking with the amount of foreign workers that you say you have a problem with. Just that I am clear. Yes. And Charmin, I will yes. move back after this. Th thank God. That is the kind of talk that I want people to bring to me. That is the, the questions that I, I, I beg and I yearn for, because that is what leadership is about. So I have been campaigning since the last election mm -hmm. for campaign finance reform. First of all, I am the only political leader that has advocated for a consolidated fund for politics. Mm -hmm. So the people must own the politics. Indeed. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Canadian system, there are allocations from central government, from the people. Remember, central government mm -hmm. is the people's money, That's tax, right. right? Put in place for political parties to use to explain their positions and their ideologies, etc., so that the people can make an informed decision. That way, the new national vision, I don't have to go and raise my money through barbecue or beg or this or that. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the PNM doesn't have to go to wherever their financiers are, who, who obviously, if they put money in, want something in return. And likewise, the UNC doesn't have to go into government and put away a nest fund mm -hmm. for when they come for the next election to spend. The m amount of money being spent on elections is phenomenal. Thanks for this free opportunity. Mm -hmm. But when I go to other radio stations and ask for some time, they tell me, well, how much you have, what time slot you want. If I go to the newspaper, mm. ain't no free press there. I mean, thank God they may cover what you say sometimes and quote what they want to quote. But if you want to put your idea cr across directly, mm -hmm. bet your bottom dollar you got to pay. You know, mm -hmm. every, mm -hmm. campaign, um, every campaign forum, every meeting has a cost it, you know. You, you have to put up a stage or you have to get a mic. You, and that is a poisonous thing in our democracy where the money for those things is coming from people who have their own self-interests mm -hmm. and they infiltrate our parties. You know, and, and that, is, that is sad. It, it undermines our democracy. And like I said, we are the only party that have been championing this campaign finance reform in the real way where we want a consolidated fund. If you have a party and you have a certain amount of um, people registered and supporting, then you are afforded a certain amount to do. Obviously, it, it has to be regulated what you use the money for. All right, be that as may for the areas that you're working hard in, Karanaj Rishplain, Kovi, and Laperta. Yes. Right? These are... And at a certain level on the ground, once the frenzy starts and it, it, it kicks in. Bagatelle, Smith Hill, Carinard, Thank Scorpion, you. Thank Point you. Kumana, um, Landsmeter. You know, we extend straight across, straight across. Yeah. But once the campaign kicks in, yes. and the eat of food, the people who cater to the eat of food crowd, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be a lot of money on the ground. They're going to be paid 100 traditionally, paid 100 or 200 dollars to come into and give no jersey to go into a maxi to go to a meeting. Yeah. And, and all of that. 
how are you surviving? Because your the people that you you expect to vote for you would be people who would also mm-hmm. eat a food as well. Yeah. All right. Um. So are you telling them like the rest of the political parties eat a food but come vote for me? Um. Or, or I don't what know are you that telling the other them? Parties could could af- could afford or can do that. They don't have the rapport that I have with the people on the ground. So mm-hmm. even, be, but but you know that there's this mm-hmm. challenge going to come mm-hmm. ahead of you because, of as you said it with Rocky Garcia, Rocky had these guys, you know, pretty well wrapped up in yeah. terms of. Rocky was calling me the other day. Sorry, Rocky, for not answering, but <laughs> I heard you're with the PNM now, and if that is the case, you know, I'm not interested at all. But um, yes, I understand the mentality, um, the eat of food mentality. The, the young people in these communities, especially the mobilizers, because there are leaders in the community mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that you have to show that respect for. Mm-hmm. And I have full respect for them. I've been working with them for mm-hmm. the last five years. So the, the level of respect that we have for each other mutually is not on the level of the absentee MP or whoever else they're going to bring out of wind for the COP or whatever. Mm-hmm. And therefore, they have said to me, we are willing to give you this support. We understand the game. You know, we want to trust you. And based on our relationship, we do trust you, right? They are intelligent enough to understand the politics. So they say, okay, this is what we want. We want a strong regional corporation with enough funds that it, w- it will stimulate our economy in Diego Martin West properly because we are majorly, um, we, we are for the most part contractors. We want to do work. Mm-hmm. We want to move away from some of the illicit things that are transpiring in our community, but we have no other means. And I have given them that guarantee. And they feel as though they see me enough, they know me enough, they trust me enough to give me that support. So that's why I, I feel confident that I've covered a certain demographic. So I've been walking and we're going to walk even more for the next two months. And I've said to them, with all due respect, if the other parties come and I'm creating a situation where the others will have to come because they have to work for the vote. I was surprised to see Fitzgerald Hines at the opening of a simple but profound football tournament in Diego Martin. Of course, the MP was busy as political leader in Labre. But he sent someone, so he recognizes. Yeah, which is which is a first, more or less. Yes, yeah, recognition. Yes. So we we making them work, and I said to them, "Listen, I am going to make them work. I am going to make them come bearing gifts. Take it. It's all your money in any case." For what you make reference to the moral compass uh, in the nation, it's yeah. gone askew. I think most everybody would agree with that. It gets to the whole question of accountability in government. Your yeah. take, uh, because because after you you hear through the data and say, for instance, everybody understands what's wrong when folks are in office and they steal and they do whatever uh, allegedly steal, well, and and, <laughs> and 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 so on. And they say, yet when another party comes into power, they're not jailing anybody because if you're not jailing anybody. I'm not going to accept anything you say. In fact, the status quo or the ban played on. Oh, how, how would you handle that situation? Yeah. So we have seen constantly where I, I, I feel because the party coming into power wants to do the exact same thing, they won't set that precedent of dealing with corruption. You would admit that's a bit jaded, isn't it? Decisively. Mm. It, it's It's terrible. Mm. Right. And and we are an anti-corruption party. Let, mm. let me be frank with you. We are the only party that as soon as we get into office will bring campaign finance reform. We are the only party that as soon as we get into office, we will ensure that the the bodies that are responsible for ensuring that clarity and accountability transpires in Trinidad and Tobago mm. are empowered in a proper way. We are the only political party that probably won't have an acting police commissioner for five years because we don't want to hold him to ransom. We will give him his <laughs> statutory impl- implements so that when... Sure, he, I mean, that's an uppercut there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when he gets his statutory implements and we can't Should remove him, <laughs> we, and we can't remove him because he's independent, he would be in a position to even um, to investigate us mm. and not fear that we would dismiss him right away. Mm. So, so mm. understand 
where we are going and understand how quickly we need to get there as a people if we want to see a better Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Shamin, um, I, I, I have a question for him that would include uh, somebody else, but I'll wait. I, 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 I will wait by turn. <laughs> yes. um, of the 22 constituencies, um, you said some would be marginal. Um, yes. You, that included the marginal constituencies and the new marginals, that, so that would include all of Diego Martin. Yes. Are you, and our first guest was Nicholas Griffith at, at Crown Trees, and right. talking about the good there. Are you um, going into at risk communities? Well, while you would be personally strong in Digo Martin West and you would have worked in Digo yes. Martin West, do you have people who would have worked as assiduously in Lavantil East Morva, in Shigonis East, which includes Crown Trees, or? There are a lot, all, more and more, we are more popping up with hotspots and at risk let, let me Let me be very frank with you, Charmaine, and let me be very frank with the population of Trinidad and Tobago. It, it is not only a difficulty for my party, but ex especially my party, we are finding difficulty in getting good candidates throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Let me give you some reasons. The good people, the one who part of politics. They are very afraid of the victimization that follows supporting a political party. Mm. They say to me, mm. boy, what if we lose our job? Boy, when the PNM or the UNC get into power, the things you stand for are against what they are about. They're going to fire me. You know, and that fear resonates throughout our society. And it's a shameful fear. It's a shameful fear that I could be two bubblies and a grandmother, a grandmother could tell me, I don't want the camera afraid. But mm. as soon as you move the mm -hmm. camera, she kicks the bubbly because she identifies that with what you were what, doing. What we are doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see that all through our society. So it is extremely difficult for me to find those candidates. It's a small, it's a small country, and you you, you would see things like that. So They're good so, people. So when here, you when you made we, the you made the absolute afraid statement, to stand up. you made the absolute statement about Jack uh, Warner. He said, "Good men." He said, "Good men can do evil, and evil men can do good." You said, "I'm going to leave the characterization of Jack to other people." <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I leave that for the other people's judgment. Um, again, the individuals who have made positive contributions mm -hmm. to our society. But they've also made negative ones as well. I said to Mr. Warner, you know, I took a few issues with him on a number of occasions. When he was with the UNC, he asked me to get involved with them. And I refused because I said my integrity, I don't want it to get colluded. Mm. And I don't see mm. this institution as going forward for Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. And I, I also said to him uh, on one occasion, and probably that's why we, we don't talk much at all, you take my color. You, I mean, you didn't even con consult me. And you just... You, green. Yeah. Well, green was yours. Y yeah. Mm -hmm. I, my entity mm -hmm. existed before the ILP. And I felt as though, man, people that steal a lot of things, but you will steal my color and all, boy. I think that's also called um, <laughs> those with uh, more corn will feed more foul. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but, but mm -hmm. we have reached a point in Trinidad and mm -hmm. Tobago where I want our leaders to become conscious. On my platform, I have the Honorable Prime Minister, Mrs. Bissessa, and I have the Honorable Opposition Leader, Mr. Rowley. Mm -hmm. Two bubblies, though. And they are, tra they're, they're traveling with me as I teach politics, as I empower, as I educate throughout my campaign. Mm -hmm. And why I've chosen to carry them with me. Yes, I give them some licks before. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in sparing the rod. I don't want to spoil the child. But now... You need to teach them. You need to talk to them. I think they can learn from me politically. I understand the symbolism of that, but are you not afraid of a, a, a further um, a division in the society as a, as a result of doing no, that? No, I think collectively we understand that corruption and all the issues that surround these two parties, those issues are serious and they affect mm -hmm. Trinidad to, in total and that we all need to stand up against that. Mm -hmm. And that is something I feel passionately about. No one is perfect. So if I beat you for your wrongs, or if I chastise you for your wrongs, don't take it too personally, so to speak. Yes, there are other positive things that you have contributed, but I want the negative things 
to change. So our leaders can't be too sensitive. Mrs. Bissessa, please be, don't be too sensitive with me. Likewise, Mr. Rowley, don't be too mm. sensitive. But listen to me. David is standing against the Goliaths, and you all need to take care of the people. You all need to change your ways. And if you all don't listen to me, you all will listen to the voice of the people on September the 7th. How are you raising funds for your campaign? How are you getting money? The culture of politics in Trinidad and Tobago is that the ground, the majority of people, don't feel they have to give towards mm. the political process. They feel this is their time to receive. To get, yes. yeah. So <laughs> it is extremely difficult. So I have one or two people who just randomly come up to me and say, we believe in what you're doing. Can we buy some jerseys for you? You know, okay. we believe in what you're doing. Can I offer this? Mm -hmm. Like on the side of the road, someone mm -hmm. stops, see, sees me. And this is an actual incident. And comes to me, introduces me to the, his kids, this guy. And I don't want to call the name. And says, I believe in what you're doing. I'm not rich or nothing, however. But I want to put $5,000 towards your campaign. This guy, a, a Syrian guy, I don't even know his name, saw my brother by hit hot shop and said, listen, I want to buy some jerseys for your brother campaign. I like what he's saying and give him the number. And, and that is, you know, there are people around us who believe in what I am doing. And you're selling corn soup from the back of your van at your political meetings. And, and, well, that wasn't for sale. We're okay, giving that up. Giving away corn what soup. We're so doing, that's his giveaway. Nobody corn told me I would have been there. <laughs> we want to sell, we want to sell jerseys. We want mm. to sell our ideas. Instead so of giving it away. Instead of giving it away. Right. So I'm, I'm doing jerseys with the themes, believe in yourself, we are the change, etc. And by selling those jerseys, I hope to raise funds. My personal money, I work as a contractor, and there are other people who I work with, a consortium of contractors, predominantly in Digo Martin. We have put up money to help to change politics in Trinidad and Tobago. You know, there's one thing you have me 150 percent um, in tow with you on, and that is the area of uh, reconnecting young folks with the process. Yeah, because the alternative to that is something we don't want to talk about. Yeah, um, and and and, mo and the more disconnected they remain, is the more we amplify that possibility. While folks are worried about an explosion if they look um, outwards from within, it is called an implosion, which is usually more devastating. It leaves nothing. Yeah. Yeah. in its wake yeah so we started with uh we ending with fuad um saying um that he has had problem he's having problems trying to find good people to be candidates mm. in the 22 yes. constituencies but we started fuad with a jewel of a guy uh nicholas yes, griffith right. and crown trees who persevered with his team yeah and with his football club so that at the end of the day as difficult as it may be there, there are, are good people yeah. out there but for them to get involved politically it's a different it's thing a altogether. whole different mm. dynamic mm. if you go as you keep going and you engage them at the level of the community yes. where the work needs to be done be, don't 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 um let me, let me make sure it's clear to you i am open people someone a young man sure. walked up to me yesterday in my business i have a car wash at mokrapu there and i have to say like i have seen that people are open to to me f you know in ways that i, I probably never imagined mm -hmm. you know throughout my education process from saint gabriel's private school um from our school primary school before that at the mosque to qrc to elders educational um, classes to London Kingston University I, I, I must say I have not been discriminated against because of my name the way that probably people would have expected mm. I associate with mm. um, people from all walks of life Trinidad in Trinidad and Tobago board, yeah. I, and I feel as though like the race issue this issue about Abu Bakr only comes up for me mm -hmm. during the political season when people try to use that to push fear so people stay away. Man, mm -hmm. a, a guy was telling me, you didn't see the kind of clientele you just have in your car wash. Yeah. Um, everybody feels safe here. Mm -hmm. So you have the whole West Side, West Moorings, etc., patronizing my business. And I am there. Oh, okay. New National Vision, tt at gmail.com. Check us on Facebook. Um, follow us on Twitter. You know, be involved in the process. I would like to extend to the population of Trinidad and Tobago. Clear up this myth 
the new national vision is a vision for the entirety of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. It is not an Islamic party. I want to beg people to get involved with me. We have pastors on our slate. We have Hindus. We have Christians. We have people from all denominations mm-hmm. working with us. We need good candidates. We need people who are interested in Trinidad and Tobago. We need good leaders. I'm not asking people to come into my organization mm-hmm. to just follow me and what I say. Let mm-hmm. us come together to train Trinidad and Tobago for the better. For well, thank you so much. Thank Love you your passion, much. my friend. That's, th- that's one thing you cannot beat, passion. <laughs> <laughs> Charmin, thank you so much for a wonderful morning. Thank you so much, Bishop. Have yourself a wonder- yeah. equally wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much. We wish the same thing to all our listeners. You'll have a great dinner. Mm-hmm.